Facts First presents 22 Fascinating Facts About Gilligan's Island. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island premiered in September 1964. The show was created by Sherwood Schwartz, the man behind the Brady Bunch. The show started out in black and white, and by the second season, it was in full color. The show was about a bunch of people who had nothing in common being stranded on a desert island. The public loved the show, and it instantly became a big hit. If you're a fan of the show, you're in luck. Here are 22 fascinating facts about Gilligan's Island you may not know. Originally, two of the castaways were secretaries. If you've ever seen the pilot for Gilligan's Island, you'll notice it looks very different than the actual show. The title of the pilot was Marooned. The characters included two secretaries and a high school teacher. Fortunately, the necessary changes were made, which made the show an instant hit. Star Wars composer John Williams wrote the original theme song. The first theme song was a bouncy, hokey calypso song that Sherwood Schwartz sang in a Caribbean patois. John Williams, who went by Johnny Williams back then, is the one who wrote the song. He also wrote the soundtrack for Star Wars. Unfortunately, it was decided the song didn't work, and it was rewritten and re-recorded. Jerry Van Dyke could have been Gilligan. Jerry Van Dyke was offered the role of Gilligan, but he turned it down. The reason was he didn't want to be part of an ensemble cast. Jerry wanted to be successful like his older brother, Dick, and wanted to have his own TV show. A year later, he got his chance in the show, My Mother the Car. The show didn't last, and he regretted his decision. Fans are happy because it's hard to imagine anyone other than Bob Denver playing Gilligan. Other characters were considered. Jerry Van Dyke wasn't the only one who turned down a role on Gilligan's Island. Carol O'Connor, a.k.a. Archie Bunker, turned down the part of the skipper. Raquel Welch and Jane Mansfield turned down the role of Ginger. Fortunately, the directors got the cast just right because these people were terrific together. Six women played Ginger. Tina Louise played Ginger, but she didn't really like it. In the spin-offs and sequels, Tina didn't sign on, and other actresses stepped in. In the pilot, Kit Smythe played Ginger, and she was a secretary. When they decided to make Ginger a movie star, Tina Louise got the part. In The Rescue from Gilligan's Island and The Castaways on Gilligan's Island, Judith Baldwin played Ginger. Constance Forslund played Ginger on the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Jane Webb voiced Ginger in the animated series, The New Adventures of Gilligan. In the 1982 cartoon Gilligan's Planet, Don Wells voiced both Ginger and Marianne. The Flag and the Opening Credits The pilot was first filmed in November 1963. On the last day of production in Hawaii, the cast found out that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. In the opening credits, there's an American flag flying at half-mast in honor of JFK. The Skipper The Skipper's real name was Jonas Grumby. It was mentioned in the pilot, but not much after. His backstory has him serving on a PT with JFK and Quinton McHale of McHale's Navy. Gilligan's Name Gilligan's first name wasn't Gilligan. It was his last name. His full name is Willie Gilligan. The SS Minnow was named after the FCC. When Gilligan's Island premiered, Newton Minow was the chairman of the FCC. He described TV as a vast wasteland. The writers decided to name the boat after him. Charles Maxwell was the voice on the radio. The castaways were always tuning in to their portable radio to see what was going on in the world. The voice on the radio was Charles Maxwell, and it was uncredited. He also appeared in Gunsmoke, Bonanza, Rawhide, and The Rifleman. Even though his role on Gilligan's Island was uncredited, it was his longest recurring role. It was originally a six-hour tour. The pilot theme song mentioned the castaways being on a six-hour tour. When the song was rewritten, it was changed to a three-hour tour. My passenger set sail that day for a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. They climb aboard and they step inside with just enough bags for a six-hour ride. The Ballad of Davy Crockett. As mentioned earlier, the original theme song wasn't used. The new song was rewritten, and the professor and Mary Ann's names were added to the song. The band who sang the theme song was the same band who sang the Ballad of Davy Crockett. The original band was on the show. The Wellingtons were the band who sang the original theme song. Later, the band appeared on the show in the episode Don't Bug the Mosquitoes. They played a parody of the Beatles called The Mosquitoes, and they washed up on the shore of the island. The Wellingtons may not have been able to take credit for the final theme song, but they did get to take credit for starring in one of the show's funniest episodes. The Childless Howells had a child in a later show. On the show, the Howells had no children. In the reunion movie, The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island, their son, Thurston Howell IV, was introduced. 
The decision to give the couple a son was due to the poor health of Jim Backus. He tried to do the movie, but due to his weakened state, he could only appear briefly. This was when the writers decided to bring in the couple's son to round out the cast a bit. Martin Landau and Barbara Bain Martin and Barbara were a married couple who starred together in Mission Impossible and Space 1999. Their last appearance was in the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island in 1981. They stopped working together for good and divorced in 1993. Dusty's Trail After Gilligan's Island, Sherwood Schwartz hit the jackpot again with the Brady Bunch. Unfortunately, the third time was not a charm. In 1974, he created Gilligan's Island in a Wild West setting. Bob Denver starred in the show alongside Forrest Tucker from F Troop. The show had a wealthy couple, a brainiac, a farm girl, and a bombshell. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, the show wasn't as successful as Gilligan's Island, and the show was canceled after one season. Tina Louise and Bob Denver worked together before Gilligan's Island. Months before Gilligan's Island, Bob Denver and Tina Louise starred in the summer surf film For Those Who Think Young. It was a teen comedy that also starred Nancy Sinatra and Ellen Burstyn. Bob says that when filming began on Gilligan's Island, that it was nice to see a familiar face, especially since he and Tina had just finished working together on the surf movie. The Island's Location Over the course of the show, the location of the island changed a few times. In the episode titled X Marks the Spot, the coordinates mentioned were 140 degrees latitude by 10 degrees longitude. These coordinates don't exist. In the episode titled Big Man on a Little Stick, the coordinates were 110 longitude by 10 degrees latitude, which would put the island far off the coast of Mexico. In the episode It's a Bird, It's a Plane, the U.S. Navy spots Gilligan flying over the island in a jetpack. In that episode, they have the location being 250 miles south of Hawaii. Of all the locations named in the show, 250 south of Hawaii made the most sense. This is especially true since the show was filmed in Hawaii. The cast was on Roseanne. In a tribute to Sherwood Schwartz, a few of the cast members appeared on Roseanne, and they each played a different character. Tina Louise played Roseanne, Don Wells played Darlene, and Bob Denver played Jackie. It was a hilarious way for the cast to reunite. Alan Hale Jr. played a chef on Batman. In the Batman episode titled The Og and I, Alan Hale, aka The Skipper, plays a chef named Gilligan. When the chief enters a diner, Alan's character serves him a hot pastrami and a large milk. Denver, Colorado Colorado's capital city, Denver, was named after James William Denver. James William Denver also happens to be the great-great-grandfather of Bob Denver, a.k.a. Gilligan. Here's another fun fact. Bob Denver and John Denver are not related. John Denver's real name is Henry John Deutschendorf Jr. A cartoon spinoff in outer space. As we mentioned earlier, there have been plenty of Gilligan's Island spin-offs, and some were animated. In Gilligan's Planet, the castaways went to outer space. It only lasted 13 episodes. This was the final Saturday morning cartoon ever produced by Filmation. When Gilligan's Planet ended, the company shifted to producing syndicated content. Which one of these facts was your favorite? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Facts First for more great videos.